know what really yeah. upsets me about people who are playing around with the paranormal and put themselves at risk. I remember a woman who uh, was an acquaintance and um, she and another person were going to go into this graveyard and they were going to take pictures and they were going to try to communicate with the dead. That is very dangerous mm -hmm. to do. Unless you really know what you're doing, you're, in, you're invoking a, uh, a situation. Right. This person has had so many accidents, physical accidents, and um, I never, ha I never um, you know, but he's had her as a client to talk to her about what she was doing energetically, but uh, you can't mess around with something you don't have an understanding of to take care of yourself. And you're right. Um, 287 <coughs> people died last year uh, doing paranormal investigations. Really? This is one thing we're trying to educate um, people about who, not just paranormal groups, um, but people who just want to go out for a weekend and do this. Um, because there's a lot of safety concerns. Um, when you, you know, some, some of those statistics that died was because they trespassed and, and the police chased them off and they stumbled, fell, got shot, whatever. Oh, we really? had one incident where a yeah. woman fell through three floors because of, she was in such a... An old building. Yeah. An old building that wasn't safe. Exactly. Yeah. So this is not something you might want to do um, on a weekend thing. It's like Michelle put on our advice page on our website. Um, you want to look for a group. You want to... You wanna, well, you if you're it. interested in that sort of thing, then you might contact a professional group and see what advice that they might give or maybe they would let them go on on a, um, you know an, an investigation, investigation. Exactly. Right. but to go out there on your own you're you're inviting trouble I, oh, I, yeah. I recommend yeah. if you do do that it, it, say you get two or three teenagers that want to go ghost hunting whatever that's great and all but get permission to where you want to go first always get permission Make sure the building's safe. If it says no trespassing, don't go. Well, Always is, notify the police. My don't curiosity is, is yes. that you are in a position to come in contact with spirits, but listening to you talk, uh, you're not there to help them find peace, correct? Uh, why would we? Why would you? Why, are you talking about the spirits? Yes. Yeah. Can, can you help them? In other words, that's why I asked if you ever used a psychic medium. Uh, do you, are you able to f help them cross over? No. No. That's, no. That's has, their choice, I think. Right. Because it's their, their choice. That would be I, like I me coming in your choice. house and forcing you to go sit in the front room when you want to sit at the table. That, that's, yeah, their choice. And we're there for the client and the spiritual entities to get along. If that's not, if possible, it, that's not yet what? possible. Then we go outside of that. That's why we like to know what the religious affiliation of each client, whether they want a rabbi, a priest, or, or you know, just a plain minister. Um, then they can go outside of that. We don't offer that, but we do have contacts for you that. You have contacts for people who would actually come in and, for instance, do an exorcism. If that's what the client if wants. If that's what the client wants or right. needs or whatever. Right. And then we would step out at that point and let the church take over. Yeah. Right. Well, do but, you have other people that are professionals that that actually go in and, um, like a medium, that would be able to exercise the situation. It's not, a, it's not an exorcism, but it, in another way, they might sage the house, they may sit and channel right. uh, the situation. Like a cleansing. I mean, I'm just cleansing. asking if you have other people yeah. at certain difficult situations that you call upon to maybe to assist your client outside of our investigation yes if they wanted a medium to come in and do anything um, we would contact a medium that they would feel comfortable with after our investigation that's when we step out of it we give our final report and then they have their own little uh, relationship yeah. You know? yeah 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 we do that we do offer that okay um, Tell me about working close with the law enforcement. This is, this seems a bit unusual, that they would be open. Uh, well, uh, surprise! I was surprised there. too. Um, they seemed very enthusiastic. Um, I, it, I came up with the idea when I read all this, the, all the statistics about how many people have passed away, and I thought, well, we need to 
put out safety. So I contacted the Albany Police Department mm -hmm. and talked to them a little bit, and I thought I was going to be laughed at. And he, he, we talked for three hours, and he uh, gave me some advice, and he offered some training and, and stuff like that. And they're very receptive to this because... They've had some experiences. They're just not talking about it. Right, and they want the public to be safe. If, if we are not professionals about what we do and we decide when we're going to go in this graveyard and we, you know, break a tombstone or if we hurt, fall and hurt ourselves, we're just putting the police to work. Okay. So right. if, when, if anybody goes out and notifies the police, you know, that they'll be at a location, it really saves their job, you know. Um, the police have helped us in not just uh, local but state and as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigation has they've helped us out so much when it comes to not only evidence review uh -huh. but with ideas on how to do things wow. and research. research research oh my god definitely. they help us all the time with research to get the facts um, and the truth out there um, it, it's just phenomenal how much they've helped us you know and if every paranormal group did that if they just realized that the police or law enforcement at all you know if they realized that they were there to re really help them and they reached out, they would grow. Our group is only eight, eight months old, okay? But we have grown so fast because we don't just try to contain ourselves and make us look big. We use other avenues and yeah. draw other people. Well, I think that's this. smart. Right. You know, um, I have a friend who is the head <coughs> of of security at one of the big casinos in Las Vegas and he and his wife came to visit us here in Portland a few years ago and he was telling me that he, he worked for the Hawaii Five O, mm -hmm. and he said I could write a book <laughs> with all of the things that he experienced uh, he was Hawaiian and um, I keep encouraging him to write that book because he was really high up in, in uh, the police department and he said that they all were experiencing it. Oh, yeah. So, you know. I mean, could you imagine what they might have seen? Oh, yeah. uh, he would have a bestseller, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we Seriously. actually had a fire chief in Banta that had experiences right there in the firehouse. Oh, yeah. So it's, they, I, yeah. I believe everybody's, like Mark said, had some experiences. Well, Ground Zero, so, oh, New yeah. York. Yeah. I, I've, I, I don't, I can't prove it, but I have a gut, gut feeling that there's a lot of entities that are sort of confused that are probably because everything happens so suddenly and sometimes yeah. that you know that happens. I would imagine they'd want to know why nobody's yeah. ever really gotten a clear answer of why on that but they would want to know why I'm, I, I would stick around until I got an answer right you took my life I don't think they'll get the truth probably not <laughs> <laughs> I have but they theories. got all eternity, you know, whereas we don't, you know, we well, have an they're, expiration Well, they're date. making uh, monuments out of the steel, and everything holds kind of a vibration. It's going to be very interesting what people are going to experience on that side, you know. Right. I have another question for you, and is, uh, what should a person do if they think their house is haunted? Michelle? <laughs> I don't want to be cliche, so I'm not going to say it. Um, uh, Get on the web and find a paranormal group that might be able to come out and help you, but make sure you check and find the group you think is right for you. Right. Look at the credentials. Look at the references. Um, and check them. And yeah, check check the references. Give them give the businesses a call, or you know, just make sure it's the right one for you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's. And, and in notifying a paranormal group is not going to solve anything. It's just going to identify something. Um, there, there are different ways of, of finding a solution to that. I think that's, uh, there are people watching right, right now and they're going, I think I got a problem, but right. they're looking for solution. Like when I lived in that house in Woodland Hills and it was 100 Indians running around, I was lucky that I was spiritually guided to know what to do. Most people dealing with what I was dealing with would have ran out of that house screaming. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I would have been so thrilled to have had an investigation of the house. They'd have discovered that it was, in fact, uh, Indian land at what time. But I think the, the comforting uh, of there can be something done. Right. Well, I think the, the more reason why clients come to us is um, 
twofold. One, they, to, to feel that commonality, you know, of, I'm of not being alone. able to share. It. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And two, because a lot of times it's psychological. I say 80% of our cases are psychological. And it, it's because so many stories come with a location. And so the mind can work against itself. Um, and you start seeing some things paranormal. Um, sometimes it happens with medication, such as the case we told you yeah. about. Sometimes it has exceptions. something to do with the past. Yeah. So we do weed through all that with the client and, you know, uh, like we still have clients to this day that we're still helping out. Um, not necessarily to find an answer, but to find the comfortable atmosphere that they want. Um, if I were to pass on um, and I stayed here on this stage, I don't want you to get rid of me. I just want to. I just want you to understand that it I want to live with this. It would depend if you were irritated. <laughs> exactly. Well, you'd be surprised how many of our clients have actually wanted the entity to stay. Oh yeah. So they just want someone to back up their claims. That's why they call us. They're they're happy. They're there. They're they excited. There's probably to. more of that. Uh, I've heard a lot of people who have said it's not really bothering me, so it's not a problem. Right. Uh, it's more my concern of where people have done some practices and evoked oh, yeah. uh, and brought in entities that basically are extremely harmful. And uh, there's, like I said, we've talked earlier about this, there's many, many levels uh, to this. And I think that people need uh, to know that they can call people like you and you can come in and give them some answers. You know, it doesn't have to be an old house. Uh, right. It can be, no, no. like, my experience was brand new construction. Well, speaking as a psychologist, anybody with a psychosis, I don't care if it's small or large, can be reasoned with, you know, on some level, whether they be alive or dead, you know. So um, I don't believe... I mean, I could sit down and have a great conversation with Charles Manson and walk away and think he's normal, okay, because he believes what he believes, even though he's got a huge psychosis that he <laughs> needs to work on. Um, but I could reason with him and, and uh, get him. Well, you know, um, that would not be my first choice of an interview. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go uh, and we're going to be ending the show, and I just want to thank you. For, thank I you so, so much. I appreciate you coming, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank our crew for their wonderful support and our sponsors, El Pollo Loco in Beaverton on Southwest Cedar Hills Boulevard and on Gleason Street in Wood Village. For our beautiful flowers, Westside Florist in Aloha Market Center on Southwest TV Highway in Aloha. Remember to create possibilities in your life and believe in miracles. See you next time. Thank you for watching Create Your Own Reality, a program about hope, inspiration, and encouragement. If you would like to be a member of our audience for future shows, please email us at createyourownreality at hotmail.com.